All right, I think we're uh, ready to get started. Um, we will uh, first hear remarks from uh, the public advocate, uh, followed by um, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, uh, Councilman Holden, who's uh, chair of the council's tech committee. Um, and we've also been joined by uh, Noel Hidalgo uh, with Beta NYC. And uh, then we'll take questions from reporters who've joined us through Zoom. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to the public advocate. Thank you very much. Can, can everyone hear me? Yep. Uh, thanks everyone for joining this uh, press service. It's a very important topic. I am um, extremely angry, extremely frustrated about what we're seeing. I know everybody feels similarly. I am gonna try to both express that just fury at the way these things have been laid out. Um, and uh, with the, the the feeling that we can actually do better um, and if we just made some some small changes, I am happy to see that it seems like our percentage of people are getting vaccinated are going up. Um, so I wanna at once express anger and try to push our government uh, to exude more confidence from the people of the city of New York. I wanna start off with a text that I got uh, from my fifth grade teacher, uh, Ms. Jeannie Neff. Uh, for those who know me, I, I cite Ms. Nett a lot. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't uh, for my teacher, Ms. Jeannie Nett. Uh, but she texted, good morning, Jamani. Listen, explanation point. They're going to have to figure out a different way for seniors to access the COVID vaccination process. It's so difficult navigating the website with arthritis, poor computer skills, and faulty memory. 77 ain't easy, but other than this, I love being old, Ms. Jeannie Nett. Uh, I know that my colleagues are going to share their own stories, some personal, some of other constituents that they're hearing from. Uh, this has been, from the beginning, a debacle. We had, we had six months or more to get this right. I just want to be clear about this. We had more than enough lead time to get this right. I also want to be clear, I think the vast majority of blame is on the federal government. They have not provided anything. The warp speed, warp speed became a warp trickle, as far as I'm concerned, when it came to federal government. But we also knew that. That is nothing new. We knew for months, well, going on a year, that we weren't going to get what we needed uh, from the federal government in terms of any kind of direction. That then fell to the state. The governor prides himself in being a great bureaucrat in management. He too had six months or more to get this right. He could not have gotten it more wrong. It's like he learned no lessons over the past few years. And it's very aggravating to continue to watch even as book sales and Emmys and things go when we can't even get the simplest of these things correct. And then in the city, similarly with the mayor, there were so many other things that we could have done. So at each level, there were things that could have been done to make up for the lack of leadership on the level above that just wasn't. And I think what people have the right to ask for and get is that every level of government is at least doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. And what we're seeing is that's not happening. Um, I don't, and I'm not looking for a perfect system. I don't want a perfect system where people aren't getting vaccinated. So we will have some blemishes but we want to see a system that's actually the best that we can do at the moment in time, and that's not what's happening. And as many have said, it's not simply a vaccine that will help us move through the COVID-19 crisis, but it's vaccinations and access to them. Um, and what we've seen is, especially from the governor and mayor, is a, a failure of outreach, a failure of putting the right uh, bureaucracy in place, and messaging. These two men have to get on the same page now. This back and forth and this bickering, get on the same page. And the governor has to allow localities like New York City to do some things to address that they know only uh, that only they locally can be fixed. Like that has to be done. You can't hold on to all of the decision making and then pass off all of the blame. Thankfully, we have recently expanded the pool of New Yorkers with access to the vaccine. I want to thank. Uh, the mayor for actually being correct on this and pushing on this and for the governor to finally relenting. It's my hope and expectation that with the new federal administration, there'll be access to a greater supply of doses. 
Uh, but the infrastructure, the bureaucracy, and the technology are becoming further barriers, preventing access for even those that are eligible. And the government is responsible to correct these errors, and we have the tools. Throughout the pandemic, people have heard conflicting messages from the city, from the state, from the federal government. These messaging issues have persisted into the vaccination phase. There is a decentralized patchwork of registration tools and appointment process which span multiple sites and create a cumbersome process for people in need. This fails a basic accessibility requirement and responsibility for government. I have previously passed legislation to enhance website accessibility, and this doesn't meet that standard that we passed even as recently as last January. Uh, the law which I passed a year ago would enhance requirements for city government website access accessibility standards, which several agencies have failed to meet. It's also created the digital inclusion officer in each agency. By utilizing systems for DOHMH, health and hospitals, and the state government separate, confusion sets in and a lot of people give up. <laughs> Having to answer lengthy questionnaires, create a complex profile is a needless burden. These problems have a greater uh, created a technological barrier, preventing eligible New Yorkers, especially seniors, from being vaccinated. We need to make it as streamlined as possible for eligible New Yorkers to get vaccinated, and we can't impose a technology test to decide whether or not you can get the vaccine. So what we can do, first, the state and local government, the mayor and the governor need to work with and not against each other, please. We need systems aligned for simplicity. We have to have expanded, ever expanding uh, eligibility. Uh, but having the eligibility to 1B means you'll have to improve both the online and phone registration infrastructure. Now, and ahead of any further expansions to 1C. This includes an increase in staffing to support those systems. I think the best solutions come from an inside-outside strategy, a collaboration between government and advocacy organizations. I want to thank Beta NYC that I know is going to speak for their insight on how we can meet this moment. Here in the city, we have several offices which can and frankly should have been engaged long before to improve information and technological accessibility for Baltimore, New Yorkers. These teams need to be working together. I'm thankful that it's not too late for them to be working together. So we can't get this right. The Mayor's Office of Economic Opportunity, which is tasked with making sure platforms are accessible to vulnerable populations through the Civic Service Design Studio, the Digital Services Unit through the Chief Technology Officer, the User Experience Unit of the NYC Do It Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, units within city planning labs, the Office of Data Analytics and Park and Recreations and the New York City Civic Empowerment Commission. If these agencies and these offices make public their recommendations for design accessibility, infrastructure strength, and data collection and analytics, it will enable the public and elected officials to adopt necessary improvements and better hold the city to account. I do want to acknowledge Councilman Beholden for a letter he put out with similar recommendations even yesterday. So I thank him for that as well. We will also need to expand staff to troubleshoot inevitable issues. Vaccination access needs to be equitable so using the tools and locations we have and the data we need, we can ensure this happens moving forward. As I said, I am glad to see the percentage of people getting vaccinations are up, but from the problems that we're seeing, we're concerned that those numbers are filled with people who uh, have the ability to maneuver this. And if you don't, you're not getting it. And very likely you might be the folks who were suffering the most to begin with. And so we also would like to track uh, to make sure we are aware of ethnicity and race and community uh, who's getting it so it's being put forth in an equitable fashion because we know who was hit the most and we have to make sure that the people who need it the most are getting it and not uh, missing out because they can't pass the technology technology test that's being put forth on every level of government <laughs> so uh, please uh, up until this point it's been a little scrambling <laughs> the good news is we can get this right there's a clear path forward <laughs> I'm glad and I've toured with the mayor, one of the 24 hour, 24-7 uh, sites. Those are good. We need more. I do want to remind people that, um, you know, many of the seniors uh, are not going to travel to these sites. So there are other areas that are not 24-7 that are ju just as important. So we want to lift it up as well. But we have to make it uh, easily accessible. Uh, so I just want to call on Borough President uh, Gary Brewer, who has been uh, a stalwart in pushing forward uh, technology issues for a very long time. Well, President. 
Thank you very much, uh, Public Advocate Williams. And I want to thank uh, the City Council, including Council Member Holden, for holding that hearing yesterday on vaccines, which I participated in. And I certainly want to thank uh, Noel Hidalgo, who help, will speak later about some of these issues. Um, as a borough president, starting last weekend, when the word vaccine was uh, discussed as a possibility, my phone has not stopped ringing. And it's mostly from seniors, as you'll hear from others. Um, the problems are so intense in terms of the communication. I agree with the public advocate. I am glad that there are more people who are uh, able to be signed up. However, of course, on the federal level, there's a supply issue. We understand from the commissioner of health yesterday, he announced at the hearing, there was only 100,000 uh, doses available, I guess 300,000 for the state. I know the governor is frustrated, the mayor is frustrated, the commissioner is frustrated. So we do have a supply issue, but we have no reason to have a technology issue because even telling people that kind of information when they sign up, it is very complicated to sign up. You will hear that from the uh, council member in a few minutes. Um, the seniors call, they can wait 30 minutes on a phone call. And whether or not there is communication between the state and the city, it is still complicated. We know, for instance, that there is the Javits Center. And we know, for instance, that in my area, I can sign up at the local health center. But I don't know what I'm going to get when I go online or when I make a phone call. There's no sense of, and this council member mentioned this yesterday at the hearing, I live in X location. What is closest to me? And of course, if you uh, work with an airline, work with a department store, you put in your zip code and they will tell you in a second, what is the closest to my home that you would like to take advantage of? Um, the state and the city, <clears throat> maybe they are working together more than we know, but I can tell you that it appears that they're not. If you go online, you have several opportunities for finding different websites that are perhaps available to you. So you could spend a great deal of time trying to figure out which website makes more sense for me. There should be one website for the entire city and it should be clear and it should be well populated and it should be available. There should be one call center for the city, not a state and a city call center so that people can get information readily. Now, in terms of who should be doing this, that's one of the challenges. We do have a CTO, we have a chief technology offer, officer, Don Paul Farmer, and I would think that he would be the one that should be tasked with making this happen. We obviously have a do it, and then we have some new agencies that have come online uh, during this administration, which uh, historically, and uh, I've had some challenges with, why do we need these new agencies when we already have those that are doing what seems to me the same mission? We also, as you hear from uh, Noel Togago, we have certain ways in which uh, test bedding has taken place in the city of New York over time to be able to make sure that these uh, situations work. We also have major technology companies in the city of New York, and I'm sure they, if asked, would be helpful. So I'm here to say that this uh, implementation is just full of bugs. Um, our most vulnerable population are not going to be able to get tested quickly, not going to be able to get vaccinated quickly. Let me give an example. We have thousands of people, seniors in NYCHA. And we hear by rumor, that's how we're getting information, that the hospitals that are near NYCHA development have been asked to work with NYCHA development. That is not the way to go about having a systemic vaccination program. What happens if you're in a NYCHA development that is not near a hospital, as an example. We've also heard that believe it or not, I don't know if this is true because there are so many rumors that the CDC has been reaching out to developments that have large numbers of seniors and saying, would you like to participate for 65 and older? And that took place even before the governor announced that people 65 and older could get vaccinated. We don't know where these developments are. We don't know that if it's widespread or if it's just the one that we have heard of. Um, we also don't know exactly uh, who is going to go to the homebound. We have been told that there will be opportunities for a homebound, those who cannot leave their homes to get vaccinated. We don't know exactly what kinds of technology they'll be using in order to make sure that that access of vaccination is, is possible. 
So we too, like everyone else on this call, we're calling on the mayor to use the wealth of resources and agencies already available to him. I know the New York City Civic Empowerment Commission, now that was uh, developed as the public advocate knows uh, in the last year when we voted for it in November. And I must admit, I was one of the people who did not support the creation of this agency because I do think it's duplicative. There's also the Mayor's Office of Economic Opportunity and they both have the mission of ensuring accessibility of city technology. Why we have two agencies doing the same thing, I don't know. That is what I think the chief technology officer should be doing. But, um, and they have to be working with the state. Um, there is no reason to have two call centers. Now, my understanding is if you go to the city website, they will recommend you to the Javits, which is a state facility. If you go to the state website, which I just did, they do not recommend city sites. What's going on? So um, I am concerned because I don't think any of this is necessary. Um, there is certainly, uh, as I indicated earlier, a challenge in terms of supply, but that should have nothing to do with the fact that this technology is not up to par. So we're calling on the state and the city to have a unified technology system. If you need more people to help in the call center, if you need more people to help in any way, you should be asking for help, but it's a very least the technology should work. Thank you very much, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. And now uh, uh, Council Member Holden, who, as I mentioned, sent the letter out asking for similar things yesterday. Uh, as the Borough President said, there was a, a great um, council hearing and, and the Council Member asked some pretty pointed questions. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Public Advocate, for holding this important press conference. Uh, and I thank you, uh, Manhattan Borough President uh, and longtime tech advocate Gail Brewer and Beta NYC uh, for being on the call. And uh, um, this is an issue that we fully agree uh, upon. Um, uh, like the public advocate said, the city had several months to prepare for the rollout of the vaccine, yet here we are. Um, one of the greatest cities in the world lagging behind others during a pandemic. You know, we're at war with COVID-19. Everybody knows that. We need a wartime effort by the city. We are not seeing this. Uh, yesterday's uh, health committee hearing in the council, I questioned Dr. Chosky, uh, the health commissioner on the techno technological and outreach aspect of the vaccine rollout. Uh, thanks to the hard work of Beta NYC, it was uncovered that the city was not tapping into some of the bright and, uh, and talented tech minds uh, that work in city agencies, like uh, like the borough president said, the mayor's office of economic opportunity, civic services design studio, uh, the chief technology officers, New York City digital services unit, New York City planning labs, the mayor's office of data analytics or Moda, and others. They're not being asked to help. Why? Uh, Dr. Shosky uh, said uh, that through the vaccine command center that all of these resources are being leveraged and brought to bear and that the mayor has charged the city to use every resource uh, at the city's disposal to meet this need. Yet, you know, we've heard from city workers in these units that I mentioned, and that isn't the case. So again, why? Uh, the city needs to be the leader on these issues. One of the biggest problems is that the city portal is nothing more than a glorified store locator. Uh, the user puts in their zip code, and I did this yesterday, and is redirected to a third party website. From there, they have to fill out a, a form with multiple steps only to find, find out that there's no appointments are available. Many times people need to repeat this process dozens of times. And I did that yesterday, it was very frustrating. Um, many locations even ask you to call. And I did that and there were no appointments. And they said they, every uh, area that I asked, was asked to call, I couldn't get an appointment or they said, call back uh, next week. I said, when are you gonna have the vaccine available? We don't know. So they should have they built a portal that had private institutions integrated with their system to only show locations where appointments are available. How hard is that? Uh, people could have filled out one form and select a location nearest to them 
with open appointments. This is the 21st century, folks. The mayor is not even leading on this. They got to get everybody together. That's what a mayor does. Um, so the hierarchy of these websites is very confusing and it makes the process even more ridiculous. So we need an all of government approach to vaccinating those who qualify for phase 1B. Um, technology is the key here and we need to utilize it. Um, you know, again, I, in the city council as chair of the tech committee, I'll be holding a hearing next Tuesday on smart cities. We'll discuss several issues and forward leading technologies that can bring the city into the 21st century. Uh, unfortunately, we should be, we should be here um, with the technology, but we're here with this kind of technology in the city. <laughs> Yeah, this is the kind of thing. You know, this is this is what we're dealing with on these uh, technology on these uh, the city website. So um, um, again, I have a I have a large senior population in my district. I think many districts have that, and um, people over sixty five um, they don't they don't have the technology. They don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the you know the coaching to get through this system. We should make it easier for people to get the vaccine, right? Because it's to everyone's interest that more people get vaccinated, not let, not discourage them, like like the public advocate said and the, and the borough president said, we're discouraging people from getting this with this ridiculous way to schedule an appointment. So we have to move on and, um, and again, and not have uh, this uh, store locator. And again, like I mentioned before, it, that's all this website is. Uh, it's just telling you where you can call and then you have to then fight and fight and fight to get anything. So, but uh, I want to thank the public advocate and the borough president. Um, we have a long way to go with this, but I think like, like the public advocate said, we can solve this. We have the minds, we have the talent, tap into them, use them. Thank you. Thank you, public advocate. Thank you, borough president. Uh, thank you, council member. Uh, now we'll go to uh, Noah Hidalgo from Beta NYC. I want to thank uh, Noah for uh, the comments that, that he's been making about this and all the work that he's been doing uh, for such quite a, a long time on these issues. Uh, well, thank you, Public Advocate Williams, Borough President and Council Member. Um, uh, honestly, um, I'm flabbergasted by the continuous poor leadership as well from the federal government to the state to the city. Uh, I've had a number of calls on Monday and Tuesday just trying to figure out you know, how could these systems have gone wrong? Uh, and long story short, even the Department of Health's own tech designers were sidelined and their voices marginalized in the feedback that they were providing that, that were pointing out some of these issues. Uh, and these sites keep on failing because the city's best service designers, the technologists and information managers are really sitting on the sidelines. You can't legislate good design as much as I appreciate all of the pieces of legislation that are coming out there, but you can ensure that they go through a process that reduce the likelihood of releasing a product that is completely full of bugs. There is no technology cure to what ails these websites. There are only practices that this administration has developed and that H&H &H and DOH should have been learning months ago. Um, I'm going to speak about something called civic service design, um, which has been pioneered by the mayor's office of opportunity. Uh, their outcomes in their process have four key things. One is the clarification of complicated or interlaced systems and processes, which is everything that we just heard from. Ensuring that the team is all on the same page about major initiatives and projects. That the third one is that solutions are rooted in the needs of the people who interact with the services or programs. And the fourth one is that the insurance assurance that time and taxpayer dollars can be allocated to the right initiatives. And you know, if, if we really had this New York exceptionalism that, that the mayor and the governor seems to be uh, talking about, uh, we would be lauding the success of these tools and not their failures. And if we're really at war with this virus, where are the comprehensive battle plans? I will go back to NYC Opportunity. For the last 3.5 years, they have operated the Civic Service Design Studio to explicitly work with city agency partners to shape services that are effective, user-friendly, sustainable, and scalable. I mean, literally, these are the city's best technology uh, information designers, and they're sitting on the sidelines like Colin Kaepernick. 
the ignorance and not implementing their award-winning toolkit is offensive to anyone who's worked within government te technology within this administration. As everyone else has said, we knew that this day was coming. We've been spending months preparing for this moment. And the known failures of Obamacare and the known failures of the de Blasio administration's rollout of IDNYC, which also had its fair share of scheduling mistakes and, and complicated failed systems, the failure of the fair fares rollout, this administration should have known better. This administration has the tools to make this rollout work and has refused to leverage them. It's just really disappointing because I've got a text message from a 73 year old community member who uh, pioneered digital media work. And he spent about an hour and a half uh, trying to figure out how to go back and forth between all the different websites and the email app and just trying to find a new location. And he finally gave up. He just started calling telephone numbers to figure out how he could get through um, and finally booked something for June of this year. Thank you for this opportunity to provide some insight. Thanks, Noel. Um, for reporters who've uh, joined us in Zoom at this time, we'll um, take some uh, questions uh, for folks who have it. Uh, to send it across your questions, you can either drop them in the chat box uh, or the Q&A box. Uh, you can raise your hand or you can email them to press at advocate.nyc.gov. Um, first up, we have Fred uh, Mogul with WNYC. Hi, sorry uh, if I was muted. Quick question. Do we know if this computer system was designed entirely in-house with the city or was contracted out or some combination of the two? Uh, what can we say about who literally did this job and, uh, and how they can be held accountable? Um, I, uh, Noel may know, I think it was, um, I don't know that they contracted the folks out. Uh, my um, uh, director of technology, actually, uh, John Cat is also, I know he wasn't expecting to speak, but if you have uh, information on that, John, you can, you can feel free to jump in. My director of technology development and data, or right, maybe he's, uh, yeah, I can, I can briefly say that we so. know that, that, uh, um, city agencies, uh, DOH, you know, right now it looks like there are, are three agencies that have had a hand in this, um, uh, some of these systems are hosted on Do It servers, uh, so they would have had to go through uh, a security process, which means that there was already uh, um, interagency engagement in regards to making sure that these systems uh, would have been uh, safe and secure. Um, Department of Health is running one, and then H&H uh, &H is running the other one. Um, I think that these websites, uh, so to answer your question specifically, um, I know that the Department of Health's website uh, was developed uh, in-house, it was prototyped, um, but at, to what extent it was using internal uh, designers and technologists uh, seems to be that that wasn't the case. Um, I do know that someone there told me that, that their feedback was, um, uh, they were essentially marginalized. They were, they were their, their feedback on that this was a complicated system was like, thank you for, thank you for your advice. Uh, we just have to launch this thing regardless of the condition that it's in. Yeah, um, I have, I did speak to do it, the commissioner, and um, they were in charge of just doing the vaccine locator aspect of the, uh, of, of the site, of the city site. So they, they weren't asked to do much more than that. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions that have come through. So if there are um, any follow-ups from reporters who've joined us in Zoom, uh, feel free to email us at press at advocate.nyc.gov and uh, we'd be happy to coordinate. Uh, and with that, I think we can wrap. Uh, um, thank you, everybody. Again, you know, I just want to remind folks that these things are, keep compounding on each other. And that, I mean, we, we threw out vaccine. New York throw, has thrown out vaccine. That's just unacceptable. 
And that was because of the governor's reluctance to expand when we need to expand. So there's just errors upon errors in a city and a state that should be leading the way on these things. And I don't think, I think we, I don't think we can't express how devastating that is to these communities. At the same time, we are trying our best to have um, our constituents gain or retain faith uh, in our government systems. It's the only way we're gonna get through it. And we have the ability to do that. If people would just own up to where the errors were and take the advice of people who are focusing on these things on how we can make it better. And that, that's our ask to vote the mayor and the governor so we can get this right. And just a note, you know, hopefully in your story, just reminding folks, the vaccine is helpful, but it doesn't uh, excuse the need for doing the other things like washing your hands, social distancing, and wearing your masks. Uh, this vaccine is not gonna get us out overnight. So we wanna just encourage folks to continue to do that. So thank you. I just wanna throw one other thing quickly, which is uh, regarding the seniors. They really do need help. Um, and the websites have to be, in my opinion, made simpler because I just went on some and I have previously, there's a couple of websites and there were even some websites around the weekend that were not available normally to the public. And they were floating around because they're supposed to be used only for essential workers, but essential workers had shared them and people were getting appointments that way. In addition, the issue is within the city, I happen to know, and I think Noel knows this, there's a lot of internal strife between different agencies doing technology. And this would be an example where the mayor needs to say, in my opinion, one person needs to be in charge of this project and then do the kind of outreach. Um, that's, what's, that's also a challenge that this administration is facing. And I also wanna mention that the call centers, although that's not high technology, that's what the council member pulled out his old fashioned phone, but the call centers have to work because hundreds and hundreds, in New York City alone, there are 114,000 seniors who vote. That doesn't count all the seniors who don't vote. Uh, those are over 75 year olds. I'm not even talking about over 65 year olds. Those folks need a call center that works. They don't need two call centers. So it's, it's, a, it's a high tech and a low tech. And it's certainly something all under communication. Thank you very much. Can I add council something? member and then Noel. Okay. Thank you. Um, in the city council, like I mentioned before, as chair of the tech committee, I'll be holding a hearing next Tuesday on smart cities. And we'll discuss several forward leading technologies um, that can bring the city into the 21st century and beyond. We should be there already. But, but the one issue that we brought up that I think is very, very important, there, should be, there needs to be a centralized hub where constituents can have access to all the city services at the you know, tip of their fingers and hands. Uh, they can schedule appointments for SNAP benefits, see their property tax bills, pay their parking fines and so forth. So that's what we, we kind of need and we should have had already. And um, one the way you, you, you punch in your, your, uh, your password or, your, or a number that you're given uh, and then you see everything on one page and you can access and, and, and it's really intuitive. So again, that's where we have to be. We're not close to that, but hopefully we'll get there soon. Thank you. Yeah, just as, as, a, as a closing point, you know, this administration walked in with a, with a brand new front end to NYC.gov, um, but the underpinnings of the tool are, are still rooted in, in, in essentially in, in a software that is about 20 years old. Um, and, it, and it has been very frustrating to see this administration not invest in public information systems. Um, and, and at the same time period, it, it, agencies have been developing these, these entities to explicitly tackle technology data and design challenges. I mean, we really have some of the best thinkers inside of this administration. And I also know best thinkers that have left this administration because they have been marginalized by the lack of leadership uh, in regards to technology here. Um, and so I, I wanna just close with, trust these civil servants uh, who have dedicated their lives uh, to ensure that we have a functional and amazing city government. You know, the, the previous pandemic of smallpox uh, was invested in the civil servants 
what we've seen is a is a bunch of boys getting together uh, and really duking it out when when the needs of our community need to be placed above their own personal grievances. Um, and and we really need to invest and and trust the civil servants who want to see our city city succeed. Uh, the, our city government is the only thing that's going to get us out of this pandemic. We can't buy our way. We can't innovate necessarily innovate our way. It is a logistical operation, and we have the civil servants. We have the intellectual capacity. Let's leverage them. That should be New York City's exceptionalism. Um, and just you know, real quick, and this is just me speaking. You know, two things I want to end. You know, I think there was a mistake from the beginning. Uh, where uh, the departments of health were not giving a lead on on how to message this thing out, and I know that the for you know, for instance here health and H and H they have the refrigerators to keep this uh, to keep these things frozen, but it was really DOHMH that had the capacity, the ability, and experience in getting stuff out to the community. So that was a mistake, particularly on the state level. And also as we move forward, we got to make sure we prioritize these uh, uh, these different levels, but we're gonna have to open up. Uh, sooner than we did for other folks. And that's just me speaking. And my hope is that we don't hesitate uh, when it's time to do that so we don't throw away any more vaccines. And the best thing that we can do for our nurses, our doctors, our frontline uh, workers is really put the best effort forward so that everybody can get vaccinated. That's the best thing we can do for them is get to that herd immunity. Uh, and again, I don't, you know, I don't want the expense for getting folks, um, the expense at getting everybody vaccinated trying to have a perfect system, uh, which is what I think the governor was trying to do, but we can have a much better system. We can use all the tools that we're having right now that we have uh, in, our, in our toolbox. And that's what all we're asking folks to do. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Uh, thanks BP, thanks council member, thanks Thank you. And shout out again to John Cat, my uh, director of technology. Really appreciate his work. All right, thanks folks for joining. Again, uh, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to shoot us an email at press at advocate.nyc.gov. And we will see you next time. Take care. And thanks, William. I got to shout out William, my bad. Thanks, William. You're welcome. Bye.